<laughs> it was just a joke. <laughs> Prank. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> Today we are jumping into r slash tales of neckbeards. Yes, indeed. I found a couple of neckbeards who are basically too confident for their own good, which is somewhat an anomaly as far as neckbeards go. While most neckbeards are overconfident in their intelligence, they know that they suffer in the looks department quite a bit, but not the beards that we have gathered today, so it should be interesting. I hope that you guys are looking forward to Valentine's Day. I'm gonna be dipping for the week, kinda spending time with my wife, but don't worry, I'm not going dark. I've prepared some lovely compilations of our past sagas, so I hope that you guys will have that to feast upon if you are forever alone, or, you know, maybe with your loved one. That would be nice too. I will also still be uploading fresh content on my wife's channel, Mr. and Mrs. Red X, which you can find in a pinned comment and also in the description of this video. But anyways, I do think that that is about it, so let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we can jump right into this neckbeard cringe. Talcumbeard, the neckbeard that found himself too handsome for his own good. <laughs> it does happen, I guess. Hi guys, first time posting on Reddit? Hope I'm doing it fine. Looks good so far. <laughs> Long time lurker, first time poster, I guess. I used to hear a lot of Reddit while working from r slash daily dose of Reddit and RedX. Hey, I feel kind of out of sorts when compared to those two, but I'll take it where I can get it. <laughs> and I got to the realization that I've been friends with a neckbeard for a long time. So I decided to share. English is not my first language and this will contain some sexual discussion at some point. Thanks for the trigger warning. Here's the cast, OP, 26 female, short, black haired goth girl with big knockers <laughs> that dies for roleplay, video games, and books. Grumpy Cat, 26 male, tall, slim, but strong guy with an edgy viking vibe and the default expression of Grumpy Cat on his face, and my boyfriend at the time. And Talcum Beard, the beard of our story. He doesn't look like the average neck beard, I guess, but he totally plays the role. As I heard a lot, it's the beard on the inside. Hey, I'm gonna put on a t-shirt. <laughs> 27 male, super slim. He dresses like an eight year old kid. His mom still buys all his clothing and shoes. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> Long hair and a few hairs spread through his neck and chin that he considered a well-maintained beard. <laughs> He's not a dirty person, but he always has that super weird smell that's like talcum powder and baby shampoo. He smells like a new dad just varnished his kid in soap and then coated him in talcum powder like a croquette. <laughs> <laughs> Mama's boy. Ah, uh, I met Talcum Beard while playing WoW and we got along pretty well. He was simping a bit towards a rogue in our group, but nothing weird or unusual on an MMORPG, I guess. And he seemed quite funny. Grumpy Cat knew him from some time ago and he seemed harmless. After playing for some time, we realized that we were neighbors and decided to meet in person. Oh no. <laughs> Our first meeting went well. We realized that he had some odd behaviors, like never looking someone in the eye and doing a weird thing with his mouth that gathered dense white saliva in the corners of his mouth. So when he spoke, it stretched out like cheese on a pizza. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> the boy needs to hydrate. It's so gross. We tried to meet in open spaces so the smell wasn't so invasive for us and all went fine, at least for a while. He insisted a lot on meeting with each of us separately and we didn't think bad of that at that time, but I quickly realized that he behaved quite different when Grumpy Cat wasn't around. He opened my doors, insisted on paying for my stuff, even though I did work and had my own money. He didn't, and he was taking all this from his mom. Oof. He called me Milady <laughs> a couple of times, but I cut that out super quick, and he carried himself as if we were on a date. I made it super clear that I was going out with Grumpy Cat, though, and he never tried to touch me in an improper manner. One day, we all three met at a bar, and we were eating and drinking. Suddenly, he changes the subject. Talcum Beard, 
you know, the reason I don't like gay people is because they can't stand my charm. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a non sequitur, Talcum Beard. Grumpy Cat and I looked at each other, super confused. First, because it had nothing to do with our previous conversation. <laughs> And second, because we could not believe what we just heard. OP, what? <laughs> Talcum Beard? Yeah, you see, I've got like super silky hair, and my skin is fair, and I have a small frame, so I'm just like <laughs> irresistible for them. <laughs> <laughs> a small frame. <laughs> I don't intend to be mean. But he's literally one of the ugliest people that I've ever met in my life. It seems like nothing on his body or face is in the correct size or place. He's just grotesque. <laughs> and when he smiles, he sends chills down your spine. Like the actors that portray pedophiles in films. He just has that vibe. He's nothing of the sort though, let me be clear. He just has that cringy pedophile aura. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably just as bad. Grumpy Cat is baffled, and I'm using all of my self-control not to snap at him or laugh. Talcum Beard? I can see his stares. How those people look at me. I know they want me, but they're afraid to hit on me. It's just super annoying. OP? Talcum Beard, you know I'm bisexual, and I don't find you attractive at all. Talcum Beard? You don't count. You're a girl. I got nothing against gay or bisexual girls, it's just the boys. <laughs> They're the worst. Girls can watch me all they want. Grumpy Cat, Talcum Beard, you know I'm bisexual too, right? Talcum Beard, no you're not. Grumpy Cat, yes I am. Talcum Beard, but you don't look at me like that. Grumpy Cat, no, I don't. But I am bisexual regardless. OP, also... What you said is like super homophobic. Just because someone likes guys doesn't mean that they're into you. Talcum Beard. But, but they do. <laughs> we stood up, paid, and went home and decided not to talk to him again unless he apologized and realized what was wrong with his behavior. A couple of months later, he reached out to us and did apologize. I later discovered that his mom forced him to do so because we were his only friends, and the only reason aside from university that he actually went out. Damn, dude. <laughs> Too accurate. After a while of knowing him, I realized that he had an odd obsession of talking about sex and relationships all the time. Also, he confessed that he never had a girlfriend, or went beyond holding hands with someone. <laughs> oh no. <sighs> but he was super proud of the day that... He nearly got a phone number from some chick at a party. Yeah, 11 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to that. It's the small victories, buddy. <laughs> he often rambled about how his woman needed to be gorgeous with big boobs and a big booty and slim and fair-skinned with lush long hair and green or blue eyes, and she has to play video games, and love roleplay, and comics, and be a good cook, and be quiet, and also be super feminine, and always listen to him, and also be smart, and love him unconditionally. Ah! That's great, bro, but how about you fucking pick one and work your way up? <laughs> <laughs> when I asked him what he had to offer such a perfect girl, he told me, He was faithful. And that should be enough for a woman because most men will not. And that he was a good guy. <laughs> TM. When I told him that he was no George Clooney, he looked at me with teary eyes <laughs> and went out for a bit. Just gotta calls him like you sees him, I guess. So as you can imagine, with a character like that, I've got quite a few small anecdotes about his weird behavior, like how he tried to hit on me and Grumpy Cat at the same time. <laughs> Or the day that we were at work, at some point we worked together, and he started talking to us about anal explorations. <laughs> Roll for anal circumference. He also tried to seduce my sister in front of my parents. <laughs> oh, and there was also the time that he tried to seduce my best friend by stripping in front of his own mother. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I need to hear those stories, OP. 
This guy sounds like an absolute mess, and I am loving it. <laughs> I just don't know what it is about World of Warcraft, man. It seems like World of Warcraft can take a normal human being and just morph them into something else. <laughs> I had to quit. It wasn't worth the time investment. There's a lot of other stuff I can be doing. Making money instead of making gold. But, you know, at least probably uh, Talcum Beard has his epic flyer or something. When TBC Classic rolls around, he's going to be rolling in bitches. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> I do think it's nice that he seems confident, but I think honestly that he's overcompensating in a big way. Like he knows he's not attractive, so he has to go on and on about how attractive he is to try and make himself feel better, which is why it cut him so deep when OP pointed out like, look, dude, <laughs> you don't look as good as you think you look. He does take care of himself physically, you know, he takes showers or at least covers himself in talcum powder enough that he doesn't smell bad. <laughs> so that's a small step, but outside of, you know, physical maintenance, you also need to do the mental health part and sitting there playing WoW for like 8 to 12 hours a day is no good for your mental health. Take it from somebody who has been there before, just fucking nip it in the bud, cut it out, it's not worth it. I've met some very cool people in WoW. I still raid occasionally on a private server, maybe like once or twice a month, if that. But we hang out in Discord, you know, I like those boys. I just can't no life it like I used to. I got a wife and kids and a YouTube channel and all this other stuff going on. And I would definitely pick that over being High Warlord or whatever that PvP rank is in WoW that people grind for weeks for. So yeah, I'd like to say that he'll get it figured out. I mean, he's 27, which is uh, slightly past the point of getting it figured out, but everybody's on a different timeline, you know? I'll try not to judge him too harshly. Maybe he'll hit 30 and be like, holy shit, I really need to get it together. <laughs> that age was 25 for me, by the way. Some people got it figured out at fucking 15, but, <laughs> you know, different strokes for different folks. Anyways, that's far too much rambling, I'm sure. We will jump into the next story and wrap this video right up so we can look forward to Valentine's compilation uploads all week long. Let me know if you're excited for that in the comments. I hope you are. I hope this is the right move. It's hours and hours of content. Like, how can it be a bad thing? Anyways, we shall see. <laughs> how I ended up dating a neckbeard. Oh, dating a neckbeard. Tisk tisk. <laughs> We live and we learn, don't we? Hello again! If you haven't read the first post I posted, that's perfectly fine, as it was more a prequel to the story that I'm about to tell you. All you really need to know from that story was that I met my ex my freshman year in high school, and from our first encounter, there was something off, as he tried to touch my breasts, and when I showed discomfort, he said, <laughs> It was just a joke! Now, I need to add a trigger warning, because there are themes of sexual assault and general emotional abuse in this story, so please scroll on if you get triggered by these themes. I also have to admit that while I also did horrible things in this relationship, that does not excuse the behaviors of my ex. Anyway, without further ado, here is our cast. OP, yours truly, a white woman with short black hair, while I exclusively wore nothing but sweatpants and sweatshirts with a beanie, Boys in my program constantly talked about how I was one of the very few white girls with an ass. I'm also short and physically weak. Neckbeard, my ex, he was taller than me, but not super tall. He was also a little chubby, but nowhere near being super overweight. He had no beard, but he did have a patchy mustache that he never shaved. <laughs> he also wore almost exclusively sweatpants with the occasional pair of Salinger jeans. The jeans were like the awful texture patches on the front. <laughs> While he didn't smell like B.O., he did have this like bizarre, musty sort of smell. He was black, but that won't be important until later in the story. DM, he was the dungeon master of our party. He is tall, and while he shaved, when he didn't, he had a whole beard. A whole full beard. <laughs> he was extremely skinny, and while he had his moments, he was extremely caring. Star Wars. He was slash is Neckbeard's best friend, and we were friends until recently. He was also extremely tall. He was always well shaven and was really energetic and fun to be around. He was also extremely caring. Hamilton. She was one of my best friends and we still talk occasionally. She has short brown hair and honestly one of the sweetest people you could meet. Avatar. 
She was my best friend, but we had a messy falling out the last two months of high school due to her boyfriend at the time. Quite a cast list. Let's see how many I can remember. <laughs> there are more people in our group, but they aren't important story-wise. So, let us flash back to that one Valentine's Day. Ooh, topical. <laughs> Avatar, Hamilton, and I did not have dates for the prom, as none of us had boyfriends, nor did we really like anyone. So, my tomboy self decided that I was going to rent a suit and take them to prom, since we were going to go as a group anyways. Avatar and Hamilton loved that idea, and were really excited about it, so we decided that we were going to go to the mall and some shops around town so they could choose which dress that they wanted. As a side note, I actually got a concussion from one of these shops because one of the plus-size, full-length ball gown dress racks fell on me, even though no one was looking at the rack. They renamed me in the group chat as Shop Till You Drop. That sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen, OP. <laughs> What's going on there? Anyways, eventually my friends found dresses that they liked, and all that was left was to go get a suit. And then we were on. And that's when Neckbeard stepped into the picture. He had a girlfriend at the time, but was unhappy with the relationship, as he would complain during our D&D &D campaign. While this was fine because everyone in the party was friends, the main complaint that he stated, which should have been a huge red flag, was that he wasn't getting laid. What a pissant, dude. Don't sit there and complain about your girlfriend to all your friends. Grow a dick and fucking break up with her. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Neckbeard. We've been dating for almost a year and all I've gotten was a hand job, and she didn't even finish me off. Not his exact words, but that was the gist of the complaint. After he would complain, we would just continue with the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> While we were in class, Neckbeard and I would talk about anime and music since we sat next to each other. He would talk about the rap that he listened to and would ask me what I listened to. OP, I don't really like rap that much, but I do like classic rock and alternative. My favorite band is Panic at the Disco. Neckbeard, Oh, you listen to that depressing shit. What about anime? What's your favorite? I must interject again and say that rap is extremely depressing from a socioeconomic standpoint. <laughs> OP, uh, favorite anime. I really love One Piece. It's long, but it's funny, and it has arcs, so the plot doesn't get boring. Neckbeard. I see. Are you caught up on Attack on Titan? OP, no, I kind of lost interest. We continued to talk about anime, but this is the part of the conversation that is important for later stories. Later, when we weren't doing anything in class, he asked me, If I wanted to play a game where you listen to an anime opening theme, and you guess what anime it's from. I beat him at this game, and he got upset, and kept challenging me throughout lunch, and when I got one wrong that he knew, he tried to rub it in my face. After this encounter, we would talk kinda often because we still sat near each other. Red flags everywhere, OP. Everywhere. <laughs> a week later, Neckbeard talked to Dungeon Master about our regular conversations. Again, Neckbeard still had a girlfriend. Neckbeard asked Dungeon Master, If I ever mentioned anything to him about liking Neckbeard. Dungeon Master obviously said no. And so Neckbeard begged Dungeon Master to ask Hamilton. Hamilton asked me if I like Neckbeard, and I answered honestly, no. Neckbeard wasn't convinced, and broke up with his girlfriend, which he should have done in the first place. The situation blew up in our friend group, and everyone was waiting to see what would happen. Oh, it's like a sitcom, but fucking creepy and horrible. <laughs> Star Wars eventually asked me if I like Neckbeard, and I responded, not really, but I guess we'd be a good couple. Big mistake. Yeah, I don't know why you'd phrase it like that. That's horrible. <laughs> We'd be a good couple. I can't help you, OP, if you're not going to help yourself. Jesus. Anyhow, nothing happens for a while, and Valentine's Day came up, and Hamilton, Avatar, and I decided to dress up. I wore a short burgundy skirt with a tight backless t-shirt, and in order to prevent getting dress coded, I had to wear tights under the skirt, which ended up calling more attention to my butt. Dungeon Master even made a comment to the boys in the group that he liked my butt and would want to smash. <laughs> oh, he's just a giant group of creeps. 
This was the day that marked me for Neckbeard. He was convinced that I was crushing on him, and that my body was something he wanted. Ugh, fucking cringe. The next day was a Friday, and we had a prep rally at the end of the day. Is it pep rally? I always thought it's pep rally. During lunch, the guys in my group were acting weird. They grouped up away from the table that we normally sat at. Avatar and Hamilton asked me what was going on, and I had no clue. So I walked over to the boys, and then they all just stared at me while shushing each other. I thought that was strange until on the way back to class, Star Wars walked up to me. Star Wars, Hey, OP. <laughs> How you doing? OP, um, doing fine, I guess. Just very tired and not looking forward to working tonight. Star Wars, Aw, oh, that sucks. I hope you can rest afterwards. OP, yeah. As soon as I hit the pillow tonight, it is over. I started to chuckle at my awful joke, but Star Wars wasn't bothered. Star Wars, Hey, can can I ask a personal question? OP, uh, sure. What's up? Star Wars, Neckbeard's mom is going on a business trip this weekend. Would you want to go to his and, like, fool around? OP, um, I'm on my period, so no. But we can hang out if he wants. God, face palm, fucking head desk. I don't, I don't, I, what is this? <laughs> This was not the correct response. Duh. And I hate that I was so naive to even say that. Star Wars, Okay! He runs off happily and goes back to the boys to tell them what I said. The conversation at lunch became abundantly clear after this exchange, but I laughed it off as, eh, boys will be boys. Why does so much shitty behavior get written off as boys will be boys, bro? Come on, accountability. While I was walking to the prep rally, Neckbeard walked up to me. Neckbeard, Hey, can we talk? OP, yeah. Neckbeard, so I heard you have a crush on me. OP, I don't. He laughed and continued to follow me. Neckbeard, that's not what you said to Star Wars. <laughs> OP, yeah, it is. I told him that I didn't have a crush on you, but I thought we would be a good couple. I realize now that this was something that could be extremely misunderstood. I don't understand how you would take it any other way except, Lord. <laughs> Neckbeard. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, would you like to go on a date this weekend? OP. Yeah, I'm down. I have to work tonight and Saturday morning. Neckbeard. I have to work Saturday night, so Sunday it is. OP. Yeah, that works. I don't have a crush on you, but let's go on a date. <laughs> Bro. Ugh. I'm losing all hope at this point. <laughs> the rest of the prep rally went on, and at the end, I got on the bus and went home. Now, there are some important things to note. I had really bad self-esteem, and while I didn't really like him like that, I thought that since we were friends, it really wouldn't be that big of a deal and that I could trust him. I thought that I could learn to like him and at least have some fun my last few months of high school. Plus, it would be so nice to have someone call me pretty since I didn't feel pretty. Stupid reasons, I know, but I was just a stupid kid. Yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty, I guess. I, I get you in some sort of way, OP. Fast forward to the first date. During the weekend, we decided that we were going to go to lunch and then play some video games, since he had the new Kingdom Hearts game at the time and wanted to show it to me since I had barely played the original on the PS2. I got ready and waited for him to pick me up since I didn't have a license yet. When he got to my house, he drove to the wrong house and had to walk around so that I could find him. <laughs> when I finally did find him, I showed him to the right place so that he would know where to drop me off since I didn't know what time I would be back and I really don't like walking around my neighborhood at night. Neckbeard, thanks for finding me. I was starting to get scared walking around. OP, what do you mean? Neckbeard, this is a white neighborhood and... I was scared of getting the police called on me. I live in low-income houses, so there are so many different cultures and races living together, so I was kind of bothered that he even said that to me because he immediately started projecting stereotypes onto me and was genuinely surprised when I told him that I was barely above the poverty line. This was 10 minutes into the date, and he admitted to me that he thought I was rich because I was white. Oh yeah, but her, her, it's a good stereotype, right? I get into his car and we go out to lunch. 
When we got to the restaurant, he told me to not touch the door. And he opened it for me. I thought it was strange, in a cute way, like he was trying to impress me. At lunch, I basically told him everything he needs to know about me before deciding if he really wanted to get into a relationship with me. I had very bad depression, which causes me to act irrationally and do some self-destructive things. I also was assaulted by a guy who was friends with DM and Hamilton that DM and Hamilton had to cut off because of this. He listens to me talk about these things and says, it doesn't bother him that I had trauma, and that he still liked me. I didn't want help, I just wanted to warn him since this will affect our relationship if we choose to pursue one, and I don't want to unload something on him in case he can't handle it emotionally. You honestly think this guy is equipped to handle emotions just because he says that he is? <laughs> because I don't. We continued the date, and when the server asked, one check or two, I said two. And he immediately corrected me to say, Just one. That's fine. I don't mind people paying for me. I just don't like acting like I'm entitled to a free meal because of a date. If he wants to pay, he can. After he pays, we go to leave the restaurant, and I open the door for him to walk through, and he yelled at me, To get my hands off the door! <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then he grabbed the door and held it open for me. This started to annoy me because it was so much more work that was just completely unnecessary and it felt condescending even though that probably wasn't his intention. I told him that I didn't like that and he said, That's because I'm not used to a real gentleman. <laughs> God. <laughs> this made me roll my eyes but I still agreed to continue to go to his house and play games. Jesus. OP. Come on. When we got to his house, he led me up to his bedroom, and so I sat on his bed while he went to the bathroom. When he got back, he set up his PS4 and started to play Kingdom Hearts. He played for a little while, and then gave me the controller so I could play. Once I got bored, since I don't really like playing games from the middle instead of the beginning, he took the controller back and played a little more. After he was done, he asked me, If I've seen JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and he immediately put it on. I fell asleep after watching the first episode, and when I woke up, he started to make out with me. Did you wake up because he started to make out with you? Because that is fucking disgusting. We made out for a bit until he tried to take my clothes off, and I told him that I was on my period, again. He already knew this because Star Wars had told him, so he settled for grabbing my boobs and ass. We continued for a bit, so he instead took my shirt and bra off. This was fine. Then he started to touch me somewhere else, and I had to remind him again that I was on my period. He then took his pants off and told me to suck it. <laughs> After a bit of that, he asked me again if we could have sex, and I told him that I was on my period. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? For the third time in less than an hour. He didn't care and was going to continue to ask and then he got up and grabbed a towel. <laughs> Jesus. This is where things went downhill quick. I was pretty sure we were there already, OP. I got tired of him asking, and it's not like I didn't want to at some point, so I gave in. Ugh. After a bit, he grabbed my throat and choked me. OP, stop, that hurts. Neckbeard, I thought you girls like this. OP, I don't, so stop. Neckbeard, I really like this, though. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I tried to pull his hand off of me, and he doesn't budge. And then he finishes, and he gets off me. While I'm trying to breathe, he gets out his phone and proceeds to blast, I just had sex, and it felt so good. The fact that this man likes Lonely Island unironically is probably the biggest red flag of all. <laughs> I was severely uncomfortable, but he continued to play the whole song and sing it at the top of his lungs. <laughs> After that, he gets back into the bed as I quickly run to the bathroom and take a long shower. Extremely long shower. I just want to rub the filth off. <laughs> at least he had the decency to not follow me into the shower and only knock to give me a fresh towel. I got dressed and got back into the room and he states, <laughs> I guess we're official. He tells his friends everything that happened, and I notice a picture of me on his phone. 
That's when I realized that he took a picture of me when I was asleep and had sent it to his friends. I looked closer and the caption made it all the worse. She's out, boys. <laughs> like me sleeping was a fucking trophy. I asked to go home and he drove me back. Thank you guys for reading, and if you want more stories, I have many more. I even have some more lighthearted ones. Sorry if this was difficult to read. I haven't posted much, so I had a difficult time formatting this. See y'all next time. Jesus, the cringe meters were just off the chart for everybody involved in this story. I mean, the neckbeard, he's bad. I hate the neckbeard outright. But OP, come on, come on. I'm cheering for you. I'm like, oh, this time she's going to make the right decision. She's going to cut him off. Never happens. She's just like, I don't know. I made up some excuse and just went along with it. Bruh, I didn't really want to go on the date, but I did. I didn't really want to go to his house and play video games, but I did. I didn't really want to take off my pants and fuck him while I'm on my period, but I did. <laughs> it's like, bro, you had so many chances to like pump the brakes on this, but it was just like enabling every step of the way. God. I hate to hear it. Like, obviously, the neckbeard is a piece of trash, you know? Not taking no for an answer, fucking hounding this woman until she's finally like, okay, whatever, have some bloody vagina. <laughs> and not in the way that British people would say it. <laughs> and then the fact that he's fucking choking her, and she's like, don't choke me. And he's like, yeah, but I like it, so I'm just going to keep doing it. Bruh, this guy's going to end up in fucking prison. Mark my words, I see that coming from a mile away. You definitely aren't just a trophy OP, and you don't deserve to be treated like this at all. And I hope that in, at some point in the future you find like a bit more self-respect and are able to stand up for yourself and be like, bro, this date sucks. Stop holding the fucking door open for me and let me go home. If I want to pay, let me pay for my own shit, you know? Like, you don't have to come off so abrasive, but sometimes that's what it takes with these beardos, man. You gotta push back hard. And the fact that you weren't pushing back is, is really what they take advantage of. It definitely wasn't the worst beard story that I've heard, but man, it's, it's pretty cringe, I'm gonna say that. And not in like the funny haha -ha way. Shit got really dark. But I thank you guys for venturing through the darkness with me. I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video. Check out the links in the description. Some of those were not on the splash card at the beginning of the video, including my wife's channel. I think I mentioned it once, but I'm gonna mention it again. You guys should totally go over there and subscribe. Kinda get yourself a little bit of eye bleach <laughs> after what we've experienced here. And if you have already subscribed, thank you so very much. Additionally, you see some names on the screen right now. Those are my wonderful, amazing, gorgeous, beautiful, generous patrons, and I would like to thank them all. But specifically, Lady Nix, Robert Waits, Pope Squid, Rebecca H, Cider Drinker, Tato Ferret, The Last Shinobi, Mark211, Michael Undead, Aaron W, Mitch, John Hero, Josh K, and Candy Sora. <laughs> I definitely appreciate you guys helping me to live the dream. God, it means so much. I'm out here living my best life, and it's all thanks to all y'all. <laughs> also, if you can support, anybody else wants to throw some money my way, that is massively appreciated. We got plenty of good reward tiers for you. But if you can't at the moment, then don't sweat it too hard. I just appreciate you coming on through and hanging out with me today. And I hope you come back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you will need to keep yourself safe out there. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Do the thing. You know how it's supposed to go. But also take some time out to do something that you personally enjoy today. Something like watching maybe even another Red X video. Hmm? <laughs> because always remember, you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I'll see you in the next one, friends. And until then, bye-bye.